Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and today's video I'm working on a commission for a customer who is wanting the version of Madonna from the 1990 VMAs. In her performance she dresses like Marie Antoinette, which if you've been following my channel for a while you know is one of my very favorite styles to create. So I was super excited to work on this commission. So I'll be sharing some of the prep work here, uh, costume, the face up, and how I created the hairstyle. Stay tuned to the end of the video where you'll see the final photos. So for this look I'm using a Viperine head on an Ever After High body. I did a little bit of carving to the face to take down the lips a little bit. I rooted her with some of this really super soft alpaca yarn in an ivory color. So for the skirt I could not, I searched and searched and couldn't find uh, the fabric that I wanted to, that had sort of like a quilted look to it, a floral quilted look. It was very difficult to find that kind of fabric in the scale that I wanted. So I did find this ribbon that had sort of an embroidered look and, or I guess it was sort of embroidered. And I ended up using some of the iron on sort of, it's like sort of like a glue. It's like an iron uh, hemming fabric or uh, tape and you um, iron it on. So what I did is I adhered that ribbon to the skirt using a flat iron. So here I'm using this tool that I have by, uh, it's a, uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but it's, there's a, it's a crafting tool and I was using it to iron some of the hems. So I have a skirt pattern that I made and I'm stitching up just about six or seven panels to the skirt to create a really full underskirt. For this one I pulled out my sewing machine, which I rarely do. <laughs> it's really hard for me to use a sewing machine for very tiny stitches, but if I'm doing a skirt like this it really does save time. I'm definitely not a sewing machine expert, but I do know some basics from what my mom always taught me. I have this Project Runway Brother sewing machine, which I absolutely love. I used to sing her for many years and always had to replace it, so I'm really loving this Brother sewing machine. Um, knock on wood, I haven't had very many broken needles with it and uh, no tension issues or weird stitches. It's just very smooth running. It seems very quality. So I spent just a tiny bit more than I did on some of my previous singers, um, but it wasn't much and uh, I've loved it. So here I'm getting some tool together to make some bustles. So just sort of wanting to bustle up the sides for that classic Marie Antoinette French look. And uh, so in, what I did is just gathered up some tool and then s stuffed it back with some tool because otherwise I would have used some cotton but I didn't have any so I just used it inside of itself to create these little bustles for her hips. So I just filled them up and stitched them up on the sides. And these bustles went over the underskirt and sort of between the underskirt and the overskirt. So I did a, um, the underskirt had the pattern on the front and then I stitched on um, some side panels to the corset to all go over that underskirt. So pardon my nails here, but um, this what I'm doing here is creating a ruffle in the tiny ribbons so I could add some detail to the uh, to the front of the skirt. So I just got some really uh, small ribbon and then 
gathered it up a little bit with a certain stitch to create a ruffle. So it's hard to see here, but it's just ruffling up that ribbon. And this just made it look a little bit cleaner than if I had used, um, did it hand stitching. So getting ready to do the face up here, I'm showing some of the pencils that I'm using. I'm using a variety of Faber-Castell Art Grip Aquarelle for very tiny lines. Previously I was showing some of my vintage Derwent's and then I'm also using some of my newer Derwent's. These are all watercolor pencils. I'm using the, my three favorite erasers, one of their just different um, firmnesses, I guess you would say, if that's a word. Uh, some of them I, I like to use a small, very small uh, erasers for some of the details, and sometimes I want it to be a little bit harder and sometimes to, to really get rid of some of the marks, uh, but usually I want it to be kind of soft so it will be more delicate. So I'm just showing some of the other products I'm using, my favorite paintbrushes. I've been really loving this Coombe Ellipse pencil sharpener. One of my go-tos used to be the Prismacolor Scholar pencil sharpener, but I've really been loving this one lately. So my first sealant uh, process wasn't that great. Uh, it wasn't really picking up the white. As you can see, it's, but I'm, I'm still pushing through it. One of the things that I teach in my classes is that your first layer of sealant isn't always going to be the best. You're going to have to do numerous layers of color. So I just push through that first layer if it's not perfect and just apply the color. And then once you give it another few coats after you've added those, uh, the first layer, you'll really feel it coming back a lot better. Um, you'll, you'll feel that tooth build up a lot better. So don't distress if it's not picking up the color with your first try. Just know that when you add a couple more layers of sealant, it's going to start working better for you. So in this performance, Madonna's makeup was very uh, minimal. And so I wanted some very sharp lines, very thin lines, so I was really relying on my favorite for those, which is the Faber-Castell Aqua Rel Art Grip. Uh, they can keep a really sharp point. And now I'm going in with some Pan Pastel for the lips. Okay, so I have to mention that once I finished this face up, um, the customer was kind of wanting a different uh, a different look. So we did agree to that I would go in and change the face up makeup. So in the final photos, you may see that the face up looks pretty different. Um, the look that she had in the performance was very Marie Antoinette. So that made it look more Marie Antoinette than Madonna. So then we decided after I had done this first face up that we that I would go ahead and go back and change the makeup to a more Madonna look um, from a certain, uh, he sent me some pictures that he wanted. And I just went back in and made it a little bit more uh, Madonna without the, the beauty mark um, on the cheek, just the one, her classic one on her lip, upper lip. So, like I said, it, it, you'll see in the final photos a different face-up, which I didn't record. I thought it would be fun to record this one so I'd have that look recorded and then also have the photos of the, the actual one that went to the customer. For so now 
So I'm adding some blue and uh, sort of uh, orangey brown colors to the corners of the eyes to add some shadow. So I want to mention for more close-up customized learning, check out my Patreon where each month I'll share a doll customizing tip, monthly close-up videos, step-by-step -step tutorials, game-changing learning modules, and insider info. I have an entire library of rewards of these kinds of things that have been building up over the past couple of years. So um, I also have options for a monthly art print or hand embellished art on canvas. So the link to my Patreon is in the description box below so you can see what I have to offer if you're interested. So lately I've been very into adding more color to the, to the overall face and I feel like it builds up this really interesting uh, skill, skin tone. Um, it gives it more like realism if I just cover the entire face with color and a shading. So I've been doing that quite a bit recently. I'm not sure when I started but as you can see that skin tone is really starting to come to life. For her eyebrows, I used a little bit of Pan Pastel first and added the shape and then erased to define the shape and then adding the individual hairlines there. And then I clean it up with one of my favorite erasers. So I also want to mention in the description box below, there's a link to Skillshare. This is where I have two classes so far for beginners on hair rerouting with yarn and a beginner face up step by step. Skillshare is a great place for those who want more structured learning because the classes are formatted in learn at your own pace, short, easy to follow lessons. So you'll find the link to Skillshare in my description box where you can sign up for two free months just a heads up though, I just received a notice today that the two free months is changing to a 14 day trial. So if you, which is still great, but if um, you're thinking about, if you've been thinking about taking my Skillshare class or signing up for Skillshare, you'll want to do that as soon as possible to get the most out of it. I believe it's after September 30th, it'll be the 14 day trial instead of the, the two free months, which is still worth it. But like, it could you could really take advantage of the more great more of the great classes they have with the two free months of course So I'm just adding as much detail as I can to the eyes using some metallic, Derwent metallics in blue and green. And kind of shading in the eyeballs, making them look more like eyeballs and not flat. Trying to go a little bit light on the blush because this particular look is where she's being, where she looks like Marie Antoinette and she has the very pale face. I always do a little bit of detail on the ears. So by the way, in my next video, it'll likely be another in my series, The Working Doll Artist series, where I share insight and tips from my experience in being a full-time doll artist. It's geared towards those who are looking for uh, more 
of a business career or making or who are looking into turning their love of doll creating into more of a business or a career. So the videos are usually based on your feedback. So let me know what kinds of questions you have for those. And the first of uh, the first video in the series was how to create your doll art style. And the second was tips for being a full-time doll artist. So I hope you've been enjoying those. I really enjoy the conversations in the comments. So thanks so much for all the interactions there. So here I'm showing a little bit of how I work on the hair. I have her uh, stabilized on a little contraption I made. And I just sectioned out the hair. After I flat ironed it, I just sectioned it out and pulled out some of the sides and sections and used a metal chopstick with, that I heated up with a flat iron, one of the high heat flat irons, and then rolled those up into curls. And then I pulled them all together in the back with uh, a mini bobby pin. And I may have also used some uh, tiny rubber bands as well. So that chopstick is very hot and I should be using some of my little rubber finger covers, but I just tend to work better without them. So I teased up her hair a little bit and pulled over the section from the front to cover that. And like I said, I just pulled it all together in the back and then afterwards I just added some more extra curls just to clean it up. She has a little bit of a wave in the front there, so I was adding that. And here are the final looks, or the final look. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you all are doing great. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.